Hi, Al here with a quick overview of the new features that are going to be available in version 1.0.1 1 .1, uh, when I finally get the, uh, the updated version of the extension to the Chrome Web Store. That should happen very, very shortly. So here you can see the dialog. Um, there's some pretty significant changes uh, both in the visual appearances and also in the, uh, the underlying uh, data structures. And that's why it's taken a fair bit longer than I anticipated to get this, uh, this version completed. So going across top to, uh, top to bottom, left to right, the drop-down menu in the, uh, in the top left corner of the dialog is exactly the same as it has been before. Um, there's a generic class list at the top, and then you can define your own classes. So whatever periods you have to be teaching, happen to be teaching, um, whatever way you want to name them, you simply click the Add button. It will add a new class, and then you can add insert names into into that class or allow the extension to add all of those names for you. I'm going to come back and talk about this uh, button in just a moment. This button will allow you to delete the current class if you don't want it anymore. This one will eliminate all of the names, delete all the names from that particular class if you want to keep the class name but don't want those students anymore for whatever reason. This one will allow you to clear the uh, the check marks so that all of the students are basically uh, back to a, uh, a reverted default um, absent state. Essentially, you're absent until you're present. This button allows you to uh, restart the uh, or reset the uh, the uh, the start time for your meet. Um, this one allows you to save your comma separated values, CSV files, comma separated values file, and last but not least in the uh, in the toolbar right now, this one will ma allow you to manually save your uh, HTML files. Normally, those will be saved automatically for you, but if for whatever reason you want to do a manual save in the middle of a class or something or other. The, uh, the buttons are there for you to do that. In the previous build, there was a, a little uh, tab that dangled down below this part of the screen here where my mouse is now, and it, uh, I found it uh, visually uh, um, disruptive, and so I've, I've split it up now so that it actually is this uh, new line uh, just below the, uh, the toolbar header, and uh, it's actually clickable now. And so, you know, I've got my students in the in the class. Uh, one of them is present, six are absent. If I click the present, I see all the students that are present. If I click again, it goes away. If I click the absent, I see just the students that are absent. Uh, there's no one that's new in the class, but you could see who has has joined. And then click it again to get the uh, the full class back. This field is only visible when you're in the meet or after the meet has ended. It doesn't appear uh, until uh, until then, um, so you don't see it when you first launch before you've actually started your meet. And this allows you to enter some some notable details about the about the class. So I've uh, I've just pasted in some text here. Um, notice that I've included some HTML tags because it does support HTML, and we'll see that in action in just a moment. The really big changes have happened down here. And this is where we have a list of all of the students in the class. Previously, that was the text field, and things were getting messy with open brackets and round brackets and angle brackets and, and goofy stuff like that. And so I've, I've completely restructured this so that now everyone appears as a, um, as a button. And that allows me much more visual control and actually gives me an awful lot more capability or possibilities for additional functionality. And so one of the things, based upon some feedback from, from someone uh, actually just a couple days ago, they said, well, it would be really cool if, in addition to being able to add notes for the class, that we could put notes in for a particular student. And so Dave Cahey is absent right now because he has a doctor's appointment. Ah, okay. I can uh, close this dialog or close this uh, edit field by clicking that little red X. I can come down. Oh, there's a... Uh, Mr. Cahey here, um, there's a login name, but I've changed the display name. So I don't want this person to appear in the list the way that they log in. I want to override that. And so I've decided I want my display name to be Mr. Cahey. I've also added an email address for myself. And I've also added a comment for that. Okay. Now, I can click the close button to go back, or I can simply click on the go to next student button. And you can see Donald Duck. Now, Betty's an interesting one that we're sorting by last name right now. 
And so it's gone from Cahi to Duck to Jones because the last name is by default the the final thing after spaces. But Betty doesn't go by Jones. It's actually Boop Jones. So what I can do here is I can copy that, paste it into her surname field, and then click this little button here to save the changes. And now all of a sudden, if we go back up here, she's now alphabetically first in the list because Boop comes before any of the other names in the in the list. Okay, so that that addresses, I think, a big issue that a number of people had uh, had brought, where you have kids with double or triple barrel last names, and uh, and things weren't being sorted properly. It will now. Um, it also supports sorting by um, last comma first. That at this point here, um, Smith comes after Duck and before Student. Now. I'm sorting by last name right now. I can turn around and change that to sort by first name. Close that here. And now everything is going to be sorted by first name. And notice that Al Smith is at the top of the list. Even though S isn't in the list, it's actually correctly picking off the, um, the first name uh, after, the, uh, after the hyphen. I said I was going to come back and talk about this uh, this button here in a moment. Well, here we are now. There's the text field that uh, um, that was um, available before. It's uh, exactly the same. I can come in here and I can type in um, another student, uh, Mick Jagger is going to join the class. And as soon as I tab out of the field, come on, there we go. Um, Where's Mr. Jagger? There he is. Mix appeared in the in the middle, and he's appeared there because we're sorting by first name. If I change that again to sort by last name, he will appear alphabetically after after D and before S. So everything works there. So this field is where you can, if you have a a list of students um, that you're pulling from another source, um, you just come into the field here, paste them in, and uh, and all of the buttons will be created automatically for you or if the probably the, the the fastest way to to do anything is to not actually put anything in this field go to the meet um, have the students join and the extension will add them automatically into the into the field and create buttons for them dynamically as they as they appear in the list you can at any point sorry just uh, click out of here sorry click so I uh, I clicked this button to make the text field appear I click in it again to make it disappear. Um, if I don't want a student in the class anymore, so I want to get rid of this another student, click on the student here, and then delete the student. The student is now gone. OK? One of the biggest questions, concerns, in terms of accuracy is, you know, how does the extension take attendance, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, it does so by making, or sorry, by iterating through all of the people who are showing on your Meet screen. And so for that to work, you either have to go to the, um, click on, sorry, I've clicked on the vertical ellipsis in the bottom corner here, click on Change Layout, and, oops, got to get myself out of the way there. And you want to make sure that you're using the Tiled Layout, and then set the grid size to accommodate the number of students in your class, maximum number of tiles. So if you have more than 49 students, the tile layout will not work for you. You will have to go back and continue using the grid view fix extension with the, the green waffle icon and the, the little waffle icon up in the in the top here. One thing to uh, remember about the, uh, the extended tile layout is that uh, I've set this to 49 right now, but if I close Chrome and come back later on, it's going to go back to 16. So you actually have to make sure that the uh, the number of tiles is going to be adequate for all of your students. Because if, it, if you have more than 16 students, the tiled layout will only show the 16 most active students, and the other ones who are quiet, the ones that are, you know, observing or just being shy in the background, well, they'll fall off the screen and they will be marked absent. 
they will not be seen as being present. So you have to make sure that all of the students in your class are on the screen at all times. One other important consideration about the, uh, the tiled layout, if you allow students to present during your meets, um, for whatever reason, even though you have this thing jacked up to 49 tiles, as soon as the student presents, um, it will show only 24 students on the screen. So if you're going to be doing that on a regular basis, having large classes and students presenting, then you should probably use the, uh, the grid view fix extension. Enough about that. Um, coming back to the, uh, the HTML file, um, again, one of the biggest questions, where does my file get saved? Well, right now I'm just going to click on the, uh, on the, uh, the button here. And notice that my file got saved there. If I quickly tab over to my downloads folder and drag it into the screen, drag my downloads folder into the screen, into the screen there, you see that the file just got created. Actually, it's this one here, the uh, hyphenated one. I forgot to delete my one from the previous recording where I, I messed up. And so there we have the file in the bottom corner. Click. It opens. It looks exactly the same as it did before. Um, students, the comments um, available, um, and then the, the various tags. So the, I was present. This student was present. This white gap in between, or sometimes depending on the, the coloration, that may appear as a white or a gray um, thing, a gray background. Um, that indicates that the student was present, and then they left for a while, and then they were present for a block of time, and then left in and out. So you have this visual representation um, that, that shows you that, uh, that your student you know, maybe was having internet problems, um, was having uh, you know, some sort of issues, um, gives you something you can follow up with them. There we have the HTML report. Um, if I quickly save the uh, oh, CSV report, notice that when I save the file, the button goes away. It's going to come back very quickly because as soon as there are additional changes, um, the, the button reappears. And so if I click on that right now, it's going to open up in LibreOffice, and I'm going to have to drag that one into the screen. Uh, it's going to ask me if I want to import. And hang on a sec. Let me just drag this over. Let's resize the columns a little bit here. And uh, there we have the... The CSV file um, starts at the top with the, the class name as selected in your drop-down list on the date at the time with the meeting ID, the class notes. Notice here we have the HTML tags. I forgot to show you that in the uh, HTML file. I'll go back and show you that in a moment. And then I've changed the contents of the HTML file. It is now a pure, HT, uh, sorry, pure CSV file. I said HTML a moment ago comma separated values so the all of the entries in the in the file are now actually uh, wrapped in quotes and uh, and uh, um, and comma separated and so we have the names in the first column email addresses if they're provided comments if there are any the time that the student arrived the time that the student was last seen and the number of times that the person was visible on the meet screen again going back to that whole tiled layout or grid view um, thing. So in this in, in this time interval, um, the student was present, visible on the screen for 98 checks. That's basically 98 minutes of the of the time. Now this student also was in and out of the meet um, on not, on 10 different instances. So they joined. I, I joined it, you know, 15 or sorry, 17, 5, 17, and I was in for three minutes, and then I joined again and left. And then I came back at 7.24 for five minutes, and then I left again, and I, there's a big gap until uh, 7.40, uh, whatever, 5.47, but there I was there for three minutes, and, and so on and so on and so on. And so you get to, to build up the, the visual of the, uh, of the meet. Um, I don't think it's as good as the uh, HTML reports myself, but, uh, but some people like the, uh, the CSV format, so it's available. Drag that out of the screen here. Close that. Oops. Do I want to save the changes? No, don't save them. Um, jump back to the uh, uh, HTML report for just a moment. There's the HTML report. Notice there's the uh, the italic and underlined text because that's what I had in the uh, in the comments for the uh, um, 
for the class. What else do I have to tell you about this? I think I've covered everything that I need to tell you. The uh, the update has not been uh, uploaded to the Chrome store yet. That will happen very, very shortly, and it will arrive automatically in your browsers probably in the next uh, couple of days. There could be issues. I hope not. Uh, if there are, please uh, go to the Facebook page and check there. Please go to the uh, YouTube channel, check there. Um, all else fails, send me an email and I will do my best to get back to you as quickly as I can. Uh, thank you very much for your continued support and uh, I look forward to hearing from you. Please stay safe. Thanks.